having me and thanks to, to Michael and Charlotte and all of you and like Thomas. Um, Michael asked me to talk a little bit about tradition. That's I'd love to do it and I, I will do it. But um, I would also love to talk about quality and um, education and so on, but because everything is interlinked if we talk about uh, butcher traditions, at least in my view. But I will try to, to keep it to the traditions. And um, just very shortly, what we do at, at um, our farm, um, it's an, an organic farm, but that's not really what it's about today. It's about uh, butchering. Um, but for me, traditional butcher craft doesn't start in the butcher shop. It's um, much earlier we have to look at it and then for me it begins with the farming, the feed for the animals really down to the different crop we, we um, have in the fields and that connection in my view is, is gone in, in industrial um, butchering and, and in slaughterhouses. Um, today this, um, this butcher world is, is dominated by, by the big industrial um, companies in, in Denmark it's, it's Danish Crown and all the education for the butchers is, is based on the industrial system and that, um, this, this connection between the farmer and the butcher has been completely lost and um, that is what we are trying to, to reinvent and, and, and start again so we have the whole process under one roof and there are, there are a couple of reasons for that one reason is and it's definitely the most important reason that we are all about quality. We want to have great taste in our meat again. Um, I started that project here because I really missed good sausages in, in Denmark and, and I couldn't find them anywhere. And, and um, then I learned about the butcher trade in Denmark and I, I was just shocked. And in the end of the day I found out that I actually can't find good butchers in Denmark. And that's why I was so thrilled that, that Michael started that, that whole process out there. But for us, as I said, the whole process starts in the field. We, we do all our, all our own uh, feed from the protein to the, to the grain. Um, the only thing we have to buy is, is uh, salt and minerals for, for the pigs. Um, we have only our own animals. Um, we only slaughter our own animals and um, we, we um, transform them into, into great tasting products. Um, again, the whole value chain is there to, to focus on quality and that's why we only slaughter our own pigs because we know when they, when we have the pigs on the farm they can um, the guys in the farming bit can talk to the butchers and they can agree on how things should look like and it's actually very very beneficial. Um, it's also very important that the, the ways from life to death um, from, from the living animal to the butchered animal as short as possible and that is where we, where we come to in the, in the next um, is, in a way, it's all about stress-free slaughter. And as you know, um, if you have an animal that is stressed, you get that what, what is called uh, DFD meat, which is um, dark, firm, and dried meat. Um, if we want tender meat, we have to, to avoid that the animals are stressed. In our place, we do different things. The first thing is we have the animals close by, um, and the butchers and uh, the farming guys go out to the animals talk to them every day and when they come into the butcher shop um, uh, Sunday evening they are going to be butchered Monday morning and um, they are completely calm because they know the guys around them so when we slaughter pigs now we have to have a look at um, how we slaughter um, a bull um, but that doesn't matter because in, in terms of the pigs when you look at, at our slaughter process you can't hear the pigs scream at all they are completely calm and that's extremely important if we want the best meat quality out of it. But we have to have a, um, may I might ask me to film when we um, shoot um, with um, our bolts to the rifle. Um, we do that, that's um, another thing when we talk about tradition, there's also a lot about, uh, about legislation. In Denmark it's normally not allowed that you, um, that you have um, the, that you shoot the, the animals with a rifle. Um, unless it's within the slaughter area. So what we did, and you will see that, is that, that we have the, the slaughterhouse is to the left 
of that place where, where a lasso, that's my, my guy in the farming business, um, um, shoots the animal, and then suddenly everything is possible. But to, to get there was a really long discussion with the veterinaries, and, and um, it's very difficult to, to, to achieve that. But let's see if we can stop it here. That's the guy down there. This is another guy from the farm. And the bull, as you see, is completely calm, and it goes down with one shot. And that's very, very important that you don't, that you, that you hit the animal correctly, that you get the right um, bullet and the bullet hole just here, exactly. Yeah. And, and if you shoot it too low, the animal will get up again. And then, it's, then, it's, uh, then, you, then you're done, because then the, the meat quality is, is gone. Yeah, look, there's, there's um, with the, as you said, it's, it's a little bit higher than the eyes, and, and it goes directly down. Now you see the three guys here um, opening the, the uh, uh, taking the skin off in, in what we call uh, uh, butchering unclean. The animal is still close there. Um, we, we take the, the skin off and um, bleed it out, and then it, then it goes on to the, to the next room, which we then call... Um, slaughtering clean, that is this room there, where they open up the animals, take the organs out, hang them on the hooks so the veterinary can come, have a look at them, um, and, and um, judge if the animal is healthy or not. Um, we come to the, to the next stage after it, I just want to, to leave that uh, standing here when the Piotr works for the so it is, uh, when we talk about traditions, these guys are, are fantastic. Um, the one cut uh, for the blood. Yeah, is is um, already within one. It has to be within the 60 seconds after you you shot the, the animal. 60 seconds. Eine unter einer Minute. Um, so that is that is not here on the on the picture because we had to to, to narrow it down to two minutes. Um, so. Um, but what is, what is fantastic with these guys is uh, that they know the whole process. They know how the animals look on the field, they butcher them themselves, and they work with them through the whole process. And that is what is, for me, um, the most important part of it, because that is completely gone in Denmark, that, that, that people can slaughter, kill, and then do a sausage and, and charcuterie out of the same process. Um, yeah, today in Denmark it's like uh, you have two lines of education. The one is the industrial butcher. Um, they learn to slaughter, to kill and to cut up. And then you have a division there and then you have the guys who do the sausages or work in the supermarkets and pack meat. But there's no one left today who can do the whole process. There are some, amongst others, uh, some of you are here. But, um, it's just nothing you can you can find in, in, in larger numbers anymore. Now you saw this um, when they, they had a um, they had the animal in the slaughtering clean and um, it goes then on to our <coughs> workshop and, and that's where another tradition comes in fast. Very important that we work with uh, warm meat butchering. Um, the, the, and the advantage of, of warm meat butchering is that you get when you do sausages, you get a, a sticky, soft mass of, of meat that is, due to its uh, pH values and, and to the ATP, has a much better um, ability to retain natural water and binds fat much better. So you get a completely different structure in the product and it, by the way, is a much more tasty meat. It, it, it retains the taste and enhances the, the taste of the meat itself. And uh, another big advantage with this uh, method is that we can avoid completely to use any additives or um, preservatives in our processes. And that makes it extremely interesting for us, but that process is only possible um, when we slaughter the animals ourselves. Because if we get, um, we, we have around two hours um, to, uh, from the killing the pig to producing um, the, the warm meat um, substance and for um, cattle 
we have three to four hours. That's a very, very short range of, uh, of, of hours and um, to, to use, utilize these, these natural processes and um, therefore it's only possible if we do it ourselves. And that's why it makes sense again in terms of tradition that the butcher knows the whole process and can do the whole process. Um, the funny thing was in Denmark again when we go back to, to legislation and regulation um, the, I, you saw that the, the um, organs have to hang on the hooks um, and the veterinary has to come give the stamp on the animal and then um, um, it's allowed to cut the animal up. Um, we said, well, if, you, if you're not coming within the next two hours, we can't utilize the, the warm meat process. So um, we need to cut up even if you're not here. And then that was, no, 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 that's not possible. And then we said, okay, it has to be possible. And then we agreed with him that we, um, we do it anyway. And if he finds anything in the meat, in some meat, we destroyed the whole production for the day. But the point is, until now, it has never happened because the guys know if the animal is healthy or not. So they wouldn't start doing something when they see, okay, there's something wrong with the animal. So that's not a problem. And again, a very, very important um, argument in, in terms of, of food legislation that um, um, the legislators also have to trust the butchers more again. And, um, that's a, it's a really important process. But we, we cut the, um, the meat up after that, we, we do the warm meat, we do the sausages, um, and we of course also do the cuts, and we of course also um, mature the meat pieces. This warm meat butchering process only for, for the sausages. Um, and then during the week, we, we slaughter Monday, we, we do the, the, the warm meat, we, we do the, the cutting um, Tuesday, and then we do the sausages and, and, and charcuterie also on and the rest of the week. And then we do um, uh, matured hams and salamis after the old, uh, in the old style, um, where, we, where we hang them into maturing chambers for um, this, our salamis with a bigger caliber up to between um, three to, to six months. Um, the hams hang there up to, to um, two years in our maturing um, cellars and um, that's what, what makes it make, makes our project unique in, in Denmark because we are really from the field to the table um, all under one roof and um, we then the butchers go also into the shop they help the customer to understand what is lying in front of them. That's a new thing in, in, in Denmark as well, because when we, we look at young people primarily, we can see that they have completely forgotten how to cook. They, as, long, as soon as there comes a little bone in it, or if it's a heart or, or some of the organs, they just run away screaming. They don't know what to do with it. They don't want to taste it. We, we did a fantastic old style um, um, German blood sausage. We, we now call it um, farmer's salami because if we call it blood sausage, nobody will buy it and because they are afraid of the blood and the fat and so on. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff um, we have to also um, teach the, the consumers again and there comes the butcher tradition in again. The butcher has to be knowledgeable about the process, about the cuts and um, yeah, the whole thing. That's what it, that's some of the pictures from uh, from our cellar here down here where we have the, the hams hanging, the, the, the charcuterie we do, um, some of the small salamis, and, and here some of the pictures of, of our pigs. We have um, um, together with the butchers again decided that we want to have heavier pigs. Our pigs get up to 170 kilos on the field slaughtered. They weigh around 130 kilos optimum. And that makes them just more, they are outside all year round, so they walk a lot around. So the, the fat marbling and the structure is just much better. It makes it actually possible that we can mature um, pork as well. So that's, can you that's tell us what scale, how many animals are yeah. there? Our, um, the, the butchery has been built to, to slaughter around 10 to 15 pigs a week, two cows a week around a hundred lambs that we produce and um, ducks in season, um, Christmas and, and 
couple of weeks before Christmas. Um, we also slaughter um, wild animals um, game. game, correct. And um, so it's, it's a small butchery, and it's it's only um, there to do crafted meats. It's it's not an industrial production at all. And the whole farm is set up that we that the farm can self-sustain itself. Because it's not like in, in many other Danish uh, farms where you have um, where you, you have animal units you can use. We turn the whole process around and say how many animals can we feed on the farm and, and, and sustain a, a healthy ecosystem as well. So, but do we have any questions? Because I can see from Hendrik that I don't have any time left. <laughs> <laughs> but you're I could, I, I could, I could. <laughs>